Some people try to accuse me of being divisive by shining a spotlight on the fact that Islam is divisive. I mean, what a weird world we're living in. I'm merely pointing out how the Quran, Hadiths, and example of the so-called prophet are divisive, and the regressive left don't like it. So they jump up and down like spoiled little children, hurling insults, but no substance. The fact is, everything in Islam is divided. Muslims and non-Muslims, men and women, halal, haram, whether it's food or clothing or who you can touch or who you can be friends with, the list just goes on and on. Now, a few people have contacted me and tried to accuse me of promoting hate speech. So, they admit it then. Quoting from the Quran is hate speech? You see, the fact is, I do not promote hate speech. I expose it. I speak about an ideology that's full of hate. I've never incited hatred of a person or people, but I do hate the ideology that condones the oppression of women, persecution of gays and minority groups. I highlight and expose the violence in the Quran, Hadiths and example of Muhammad that condones and encourages rape, slavery, murder, cutting off limbs, chopping heads and striking terror into the hearts of unbelievers. Now, some Muslims get in touch with me via private messages and say that Muslims who literally obey the Quran are not true Muslims. How puzzling. Their poor attempt to convince me that I'm the one who has misinterpreted the violent text and that Allah didn't really mean for infidels to have opposite hands and feet cut off or to be struck on the neck. They try to argue that Allah is peaceful and true Muslims are peaceful. Well, my response to them is, not, it's not me that needs to be convinced. It's the OIC nations and countless Muslims here and around the world who believe that they are to literally obey Allah and the so-called prophet. There's no point arguing with me and trying to convince me that the Islamic textbooks for terrorism are peaceful. They need to spend their energy trying to convince devout Muslims that, that that's the case, if in fact it is the case. Some Muslims try to tell me that the Muslims who literally obey the violent commands are not true Muslims. Or they say ISIS are not true Muslims. But the fact is, ISIS used the literal interpretations of the Quran and Hadiths to justify their vile behaviour. But even worse than that is the fact that the OIC nations such as Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Yemen, Egypt, parts of Indonesia, Malaysia, actually govern according to Sharia law. That is, according to the explicitly violent and oppressive verses of the Quran and Hadith. Many Islamic governments do strike fear into the hearts of their citizens and achieve peace by threatening to stone, whip, cut off limbs or execute people, all according to the direct and explicit commands of the Quran. Now, if these governments and other Muslims who literally obey the Quran are not true Muslim, then these cowardly keyboard warriors need to get out in the public space and start exposing and debating the Muslims who do think the violence and oppression commanded in the Quran is valid. Public Muslim figures who are TV personalities, doctors, spokespeople for Islam need to use their profiles to clearly tell other Muslims to disobey Allah and to stop casting terror into the hearts of unbelievers as Surah 812 commands. The everyday keyboard warrior Muslims who are peaceful and refuse to obey the violent commands can do the same. They can stop arguing with us and start using their persuasive skills to convince other Muslims to throw out, reject and condemn the oppressive and violent passages of the Islamic texts. They need to get up and say Allah got it wrong. But we all know they won't do that. You see, these so-called peace-loving Muslims started speaking out, well, if they started speaking out against the Quran and saying that Muhammad or Allah got it wrong when they called for the slaughter of infidels or the oppression of women, I suspect that they would be punished. The devout Muslims, the imams, would say that the Muslims calling for reform are not good Muslims. If Muslims actually started speaking out and insisting the OIC governments and countless other Muslims were wrong, in their interpretation of the Quran, the Imams and Mullahs would punish them severely or at the very least ostracize and isolate the brave ones who dared to speak out. Aussies from all walks of life are rightly concerned about the hate-filled and violent doctrine of Islam. We have every right to question and critically assess the Islamic text and example of Muhammad. 
Stop telling me that Muslims who follow the example of Muhammad are not good Muslims. If you think Allah got it wrong when he told Muslims to follow the example of Muhammad, who married a six-year-old, then you would not be considered a good Muslim, especially in places like Pakistan, where the government recently ruled that they would not ban child marriage because to do so would be blasphemous and against the Prophet himself. In Turkey, there are attempts to lower the age of consent to 12 years old. I don't care who you are or what century you come from, sexual relations with a child is wrong. And if you think Allah got that right, you are sick and deranged. Do true Muslims think Allah got it right when he said women are deficient in their head? But who's the true Muslim? The one who agrees with Allah or the one who disagrees? Did Allah get it right or wrong when he said gays need to be executed? We have imams right here in Australia saying Allah is never wrong. And that is a justifiable response to gays according to Sharia. That is very, very dangerous. Yes, I know some Muslims will say, oh, but we have to follow the law of the land. But the Quran teaches Muslims only have to obey the laws of the land until they can institute Sharia. And that is the goal. Instead of accusing our government of not doing enough for refugees, why don't Muslims campaign for the Islamic nations to use their mega wealth to fund and support these refugees? Middle East and Islamic countries are rolling in cash and do little, if anything, to help the Syrian and other refugees. Instead, they offer to build 200 mosques in places like Germany for the asylum seekers to spread more Islam. Stop accusing our government of not doing enough and start lobbying Middle Eastern countries to use their space, their money and ability to show love to their fellow brothers and sisters. But they won't, because the goal is the Islamization of the West, not the welfare of Muslims fleeing terror zones. The West cares far more for refugees than all of the Islamic nations put together. Anyone who continues to insist Islam is peaceful are simply not credible or believable anymore. We can read the Quran, we can see how literally Muslims around the world are applying the explicit commands of Allah to hate and subdue the unbeliever. We can see for ourselves how devout Muslims are striking terror into the hearts of unbelievers. We can see for ourselves how Muslims are striking at people's necks and cutting off their fingertips. We can see for ourselves how Islamic governments literally applying Sharia to oppress and create fear. There are certainly a lot of Muslims in Australia who refuse to obey Allah in these things and for that I am so very grateful. But unfortunately, we need to keep highlighting the fact that there are just too many Muslims who think Allah and the so-called Prophet never got it wrong. These Muslims are dangerous and are a threat to our democracy, equality and freedoms. There are so many issues that need highlighting and I'll keep doing so. I hope you will too. I encourage and am so thankful for Muslims who disregard or disobey the oppressive and violent passages in the Quran and I hope more will speak out and convince other Muslims to do the same. Western democratic freedoms are far superior to Sharia and I'm not ashamed to say so. What about you?